it's Jen. I just got back from vacation a few days ago and had traveled to Paris and London with my husband and two girls and just wanted to share some of the things that I found while I was there and able to bring home. So this video is going to be um, about Paris and I just have to say that you know I was really excited to be going to Paris. I've traveled a little bit um, I've been to Italy and Portugal and Hawaii. Um, and, you know, most places I really enjoyed while you're there and then you're ready to come home and, you know, I really don't have any desire to maybe go back to those places. But I, like, fell in love with Paris while we were there and I wasn't expecting that. Um, I, I it, It's a beautiful city. That's all I can say. It was, there's just so much to look at and everywhere you turn there's just these beautiful buildings and gardens and um, it was very authentic I don't know why I was I don't know what I thought it would be but I absolutely loved it and I celebrated my birthday when I was there and spent a half a day at an antique market and another half a day in the garment district and was very thankful to my family for allowing me to do that because I don't think it's things that they necessarily wanted to do. Um, so they were really sweet about that. And the antique market we went to, there are some huge, huge, huge antique markets in Paris. I mean, some of them are like, I think the one is like two miles square. But we went to one that was on the smaller side, but I guess was known for being fairly nice. And it was, it was beautiful. And I don't think I've specifically mentioned this in some of my other videos, but I have to be, when we travel like that, I have to be in a wheelchair about half of the time. I have um, a very rare disease called mixed connective tissue disease, which most people have never heard of. <laughs> but it's very complicated and it really takes a toll on my muscles. So I can only walk so far. So we went to this smaller antique market that I was able to manage fairly well. And I'll share now what I picked up there. But it was it was a beautiful day and I took no pictures. <laughs> but a couple of my favorite places we went on this trip. I was so busy involved in whatever it was that I didn't take any pictures. And I really regret not taking any pictures of the antique market. But there was probably... I don't know, maybe a hundred or a hundred and fifty stalls there. And um, one of the first stalls we went to was really large and it was owned by this husband and wife. And he had a box of these vintage stamps. And the other thing was, it, it was an antique market and everything, almost everything in there was very, very vintage. So that was cool but he had a box of these um, metal stamps that are mounted on these wood blocks and you can tell it just looks very very old so I picked up two of them and I actually yesterday was just playing with them a little bit and kind of learned that I was trying to stamp them down like you do a normal stamp and it didn't um, it didn't work as well as laying the paper on top of it and pressing down on the paper. So this was one that I had stamped out with and then um, embossed it. And you can see some of the images missing, but still makes an awesome stamp and uh, um, great for like backgrounds and things like that. But then I came back in and um, with this one, I pressed the paper down on the stamp and you can see the impression is much better. So I really, really like these. And then this is a tag that I made yesterday um, with this stamp here with just part of the image. And I just started off, I'm running into everything here. Um, this is just like a, somebody gave me these. I don't even really know what it is. It's like, it's kind of like chipboard. Maybe not, it's not as thick as chipboard though. They're almost like coasters. And... So I stamped that out on there and put some book paper on the back. But I, I really like the way the background came out, so I actually might do a tutorial on this if anyone's interested. I used some inks and gesso in the background and smushed the gesso down. 
But anyway, so that's one of the tags that I made with the stamp. So I picked up those two stamps. And there's, when you're at this market, you have to do, or they, you know, suggest that you do a lot of negotiating. And I don't speak French really at all, but my younger daughter does. So she walked around with me and was negotiating for me. And um, one of the things that I was really interested in purchasing there was um, just some old books to have the um, French book paper. And so one stall we went to, I had picked up this book and the paper and it was like, it was beautiful. I just, it felt really nice. And so she asked the man how much it was and he left and he came back with another man. And the man was telling us all about the book. Well, the book was 200 euros, which is well over $200. And so I'm like, okay, let's put that book down. <laughs> But we went to another stall where there was this woman who spoke uh, very good English, actually. So sometimes, I mean, not speaking the language, it can be really hard to communicate. But she spoke English, and she had her table set up um, with how much they were. So she had one table where her books were just a euro a piece, which was great. And they were uh, mostly children's books, but these, they're all hardcover. And they were, some of them are like um, their version of like a Nancy Drew book. But you can tell that they're all very old um, just by the way that the paper looks. And so I picked up five of these. And these two books, which is not that one, these two have some colorful images in them that will um, be nice to use in projects. So. And they have some black and white images as well. So I got two of those. And then this one I picked up really because I like the um, book cover. And I was thinking about taking the paper out of this and making my own journal out of it and putting some signatures in there. So after I picked up those and the wood blocks, my husband's like, um, you have to stop purchasing things that are so heavy. We have to get them home. And we did, um, we bought an extra suitcase so that we could bring some stuff home. So that worked out well. And let's see. Um, at the flea market, I got a couple more things. I got this piece of lace trim, um, which is just, uh, it's I don't know if it's going to show up on camera, but it's a really light mauve piece of trim. And it looks like you can tell it was taken off of something. It's still like in a circle. I don't know if it was on a skirt or something like that. But I really like that. And then I also picked up this necklace. And the market was only, I didn't realize the market was only open for like, it was on a Saturday and it was only like half a day and what I was doing was walking through the market and then on the way back I was purchasing things and then everybody all of a sudden was closing up and so I didn't some of the stalls I wanted to go back and get things from were already closed by the time I got there so that was kind of sad but I did um, negotiate with a man and got a really good price on this necklace um, that looks very old and it's probably not very valuable at all but I just love the way these little rose beads looked and I'm gonna take it apart and make some earrings and make some stick pins and some charms with that and I, I talked him down to three euros for this so I was I was super excited because that was an awesome deal and I think that's all that I picked up at the antique market. I forgot a couple of the things that I had picked up at the antique market. One was there was a man there who had a booth that was really like all office supplies but he had a ton of rub-ons and they were really inexpensive so I picked up these two alphabet rub-ons and then I also some of the stuff I had already put away picked up some vintage threads and this is a brown button thread and I love to use button thread when crafting because it holds so well and then just some really old looking some black thread and this looks I haven't opened it yet but it's um, like a mauve colored thin twine so those were a few other things I got there and then one other thing I forgot to mention as well is we took a ton of pictures 
that I am going to try and turn into some clip art. And so that is one other thing that I'm going to also include in um, the August giveaway. And then another day we went to the garment district and the garment district had just, I don't even know, many, many, many fabric stores. And I used to sew a ton and I have a ton of fabric. And so I was really looking more for notions and trims and spent most of my time at one store. It was, I was kind of looking around and the one store was, um, it was beautiful store. And then as I started looking around, some of the stores weren't quite as nice but had the same prices. So I just went back to the really pretty store. And But everything in the whole garment district was fairly expensive. So I really had to kind of pick and choose what I wanted to get. But I picked up several trims. And so two of them are these lace trims. And this one is like a gray with like a hint of light mauve in it as well. And the same one in ivory. And then I picked up, um, these are seam bindings, and I, they're, um, they're like a linen seam binding. Really pretty. And I know it's hard to tell on camera, but to the touch, they just, they felt so nice. And these were inexpensive, so I got a few of those. And some crochet trim. I absolutely love this trim. The trims, she had a whole wall of trims, and they were beautiful, but like I said, they were kind of pricey, so I had to pick and choose, which I liked. And then I got this dark, dark charcoal one. And then I was, you know, I was trying to pick up things that I haven't necessarily seen in the States or online, and they had a whole bunch of this. It's seam binding, but it has crocheted trim on the bottom. I'm sure we probably have this somewhere, but I hadn't seen it before. So I had a red floral, the gray, light gray polka dot, and a blue floral. And then I also picked up some, this is just really lightweight um, polka dot seam binding. So, and I'm just trying to keep all my stuff together that I purchased in Paris. So I'm just going to keep these seam bindings in here so that I know when I use them where they're from. And let's see. I picked up just a few buttons. The same store had a whole wall of buttons in these little tiny jars, but boy, they were so expensive. They were like anywhere between two euros and like eight euros a piece. Um, so I, I got a pack of these three, which I actually got some coordinating fabric to go with these. I'll show you in a minute. And then just these two other ones. So I really like those. And I picked up a couple of tins on our way out. Um, these had caramels in them, but I thought it'd be fun to do something with these tins. And for right now, I'm just putting some of my other notions in them. So I just picked up some sewing supplies. I got a pack of needles and these two packs of, there's a dark gray and like a um, bronze, like thicker safety pins. And there was a lady at the antique market who had this huge box of these very, very unique looking kind of heavyweight safety pins that would have been awesome to have. And I would, she was one of the ones I went back to see and she was gone. So that was too bad. But um, So I got those. And this is the fabric that kind of coordinates with the buttons. They just sold it in little tiny pieces. So I figured I could cut something out with that and use the buttons. And then these were in a clearance bin. There were just some little colorful hearts and some little paisley pieces. And then I also, one other thing I purchased behind me, just one second, was a thimble. Um, in the sewing store, the store was really nice and they had this wooden case of all of these um, different size thimbles and they only had one in this size 
that fit me and I decided I was going to get that. I thought it'd be cool to have a thimble from Paris and I really need it. I know sometimes when you're sewing or stitching or pulling thread through craft projects, it's really, you know, it can be tough. It's not like just pulling it through fabric sometimes. Um, so I just, I was really excited about my thimble. Um, what else? I think that's it for the stuff from Paris. Um, for anyone, there's probably not many people out there in this situation, but um, a lot of people are, some of the things I read was it would be really, really difficult to um, use a wheelchair in Paris, and we didn't find that to be true. I mean, it was sort of difficult. There's a lot of cobblestone, and my husband's like a diehard. He wants to go, 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 and he knows that if I'm going to go, I, I need to be in the chair um, a good part of the day, so he's kind of willing to do whatever he needs to, which is just awesome, and I'm very thankful for that, but... It really wasn't. It really wasn't too bad. Um, so if anybody knows anybody who's in that situation, it's definitely doable. Um, it, with the exception of Versailles, we went to Versailles one day, and while the castle was doable, the grounds were not. Um, so that was difficult. But all the other places, we went to the Louvre, and that was fine. And then. Um, we took cabs mainly, and the cabs were fairly inexpensive. We were really surprised. Um, so, yeah, if anybody needed any more information, I'd be happy to talk to you about that on the side. But it was a great trip, and we had a ball, and it was one of those trips where everything went well. We didn't run into any travel problems. Um, the most difficult thing we found was um, ordering food. And we had a French dictionary, and we kept forgetting it at home. And so we had several times where we ordered food where it wasn't quite what we thought it was going to be. So that would probably be my biggest suggestion, is if you're going to go somewhere where you don't speak the language, you can make out in most situations, but get a restaurant dictionary, because that's what we found that we were lacking um, when we would go out. But the food was amazing, and... You know, we all gained weight, and so we're all dieting now. <laughs> but um, it was a great trip. So I hope you guys like the things that I purchased. And I think I'm going to, I have my giveaway going on right now. I have a challenge video out there for that, so I know I'm going to include some of the French book paper in that. And then I also want to make some papers and tags on my own with these stamps that we purchased there. So you guys have a great day. And I'll put up a separate video with the things that we were able to pick up in London. Bye-bye.